Hello everyone, I'm Lucas Robelke. I blog at uh, 100mind.com. Hey everybody, my name is Matthias Nimella. I work on the AngularJS core team and I blog at yearofmoo.com. So welcome to our talk, Awesome Interfaces with AngularJS. Let's get started. So Lucas, you said you have something to show me. Well, Matthias, you've been so busy the last couple months doing Angular stuff that I went ahead and I took an application that I wrote over a year ago and I converted it to, or I upgraded it to Angular 1.2. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're going to be adding our animations to for the course of this talk. Cool, cool. Let me see the website. So what you do here is you have different categories and you can browse, as you can see on the screen here, the uh, different YouTube videos and watch them. So. This is how this works. So for our first example, you see that we actually have a grid of video thumbnails. And our buddy, Dan, he didn't have time, because of his time limits here, to get to NG Repeat. So NG Repeat, I'm coming for you. So the first thing we need to do is, what do we know about AngularJS? All DOM manipulation happens in directives. So the first thing we need to do is create a directive. The second thing that we need to do is obviously we need to move things around. So we are going to create a CSS transition with a tenth of a second uh, delay. And from there, we are going to listen for transition. Whoa, 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 whoa. Lucas, what? what are you doing? So, Matthias, this is how no, I've no. always done this. Haven't you ever heard of NG Animate? Well, have you read my articles? Have you been to your room.com? Have you seen anything with NG Animate? I'm going to make a confession. I stopped reading your blog when you stopped putting cute cartoon pictures up. So, whoa, whoa. this is not how you do animations. This would have been okay one year ago, you know? That's how we, we did it a year ago. That's how I did it. No, no, okay, okay, enough, enough. All right, I knew I should have prepared the slides last night, and I did. We're not using these slides, okay? Well, I, I'm glad you trust me. This is NGConf 2012, right? So, yes. No, no, no. Okay. Not, <laughs> we're here to talk about NG Animate, not just Angular and animations. There's oh, a difference. Okay. 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 So, awesome interfaces with Angular animations with me and Lucas. He put my name on the slide at least. Thank you. Okay, so for the slides for this application, they're available at slides.ngtube.com. And that website with the YouTube clips is available at ngtube.com. That is the non animated version, and we're going to explain how NG Animate works with that. So, seeing as you know how to write bad examples of animations. Well, that's quite the accusation. And I know how making. to write good ones. Okay. Let's talk well. about the good ones first. So, explain to me, you know, browsers are really good CSS, right? And yeah, they're, they're getting better every yeah, day. Yeah, hardware acceleration, that's good for animations. And great animation libraries. Yes, like, like GreenSock, GreenSock is good. jQuery is pretty good too, and animate.css. Okay. All right, so now, what are some of the bad things about animations on the web? So the problem that I've ran into is I feel like I'm running a Rube Goldberg machine. There's a lot of moving parts is, you know, you do something, you try to listen to it, and then you try to pick up and, you know, try to do something sane. So not only that is it really forces you to kind of bind your HTML to your animation. So, but, I mean, that's how I've done it. That's how I've always done it. Yeah, and HTML code's kind of ruined. Huh? So, okay, smarty pants, uh, Mr. Angie Animatius, how would you do it? <laughs> Well, I got to get them when I can. You know, I got to iterate all the, all, over all the things that are done right. poorly before NG Animate. Insult first. to injury. Let's go. Okay, all so right. you know, back before NG Animate was around, you know, NG Class was kind of the best bet for animations, right? Yes. Okay. And then, you know, how can you hook into existing directives? How do you know that a repeater is animating, or an NG If has done its thing, or and a class has been added, right? With magic. So you can still make your own directives, just like you did. I was trying to do that. And. You had a lot of JavaScript code. Well, we didn't see Nothing it. Nothing wrong with Thankfully, JavaScript we didn't code. See it, but. So, and once again, your HTML code is going to suffer more and more as you add to it. Okay. So, once again, smarty pants, how would you do it? I would do it with ng-animate. Tell me more. This was introduced in 1.14. That was in the spring. And we enhanced it with the next module. And in 1.2, we had a big API overhaul where we changed it to be more class-oriented. And as a result, ng-animate's in its own little module. Okay, keep going. So you're probably, con con at least you're thinking, why should I use it? You well, know? I'm first wondering why you stabbed me in the back, but after that, I want to know why would I use it? Well, the, the point is that it's efficient and well tested. You know, okay. we've been working on it for almost a year, and keyframes, animations, JavaScript animations, all that stuff is supported out of the box. 
Various existing ng directives are animation aware, which means you don't have to do that repeater nonsense anymore. Well, I'm lazy, so that sounds nice. And finally, disabling, enabling them, and targeting specific classes and animations is incredibly easy. OK, so you mentioned that there were different directives that you could actually hook into. And no, hold your horses. We still oh. got to talk about how to set it up. So, OK. So we have the Angular animate file, which you download with AngularJS. OK. And we hook that up into our page. Then we set ng-animate as the module, right? That has got to it. be there to you know, enable animations. Finally, CSS class in your code, and that will reference your animation code. So where's the directives in this? Hold on, hold on. We're getting there. No, no, I mean, like, I just see these classes, but oh, oh. you don't have to create a directive? Well, I think you should be in the audience. Uh, <laughs> he's not very nice, is he? <laughs> All right, so we use that CSS class to facilitate the animations. And now we can actually get to the directives. OK, this is the money. So here are the directives that support animations out of the box, being ng repeat, ng view, if, and so on. Anything you know, uncertain there, Lucas? Well, I see ng repeat, which I like. Um, why don't you show me this in action? I don't know if this He actually, doesn't know any of the other ones. I don't, I don't know if this is actually going to, uh, to work. OK, so I've taken the website that you created, and I cloned it, and I'm running it locally. Hey, this is my website. Oh, this is my version. Uh, so we see this view element animate in between. You want to see how that's done? Well, what, let me see it again. Pretty cool, okay, huh? OK, yeah. So how, how does that work? Well, for ng view, we we're using CSS animations instead of transitions because okay. you know Danny Lean kind of took that from us this morning. Thunder Stealer. And you know, we're not using vendor prefixes, you know. Please use those. The only one you really have to use now is WebKit, but you know, slides, you know, are pretty important not to have too much info. And for enter, we have it at zero, you know, going to hundred percent starting from the left, and the leave is the opposite way around. So we have this bumping action that happens. Pretty cool, huh? So you're using keyframes here, but what if I don't want to use keyframes? Well, let's refer back to your ng repeat code. And with Here this code, we go again. you did use a transition, although it only lasted a few milliseconds. OK. And you know, you're close, but not that close. Not really close at all, So apparently. with transitions in ng animate, you have a starting state, and then you have an active state. The starting state are the starting styles, and the active state are the destination styles. In this case, we're transitioning from an opacity of 0 to an opacity of 1, and we have the scale effect that happens. And finally, for the ng leave, we're just hiding the element. So you know, let's look at the actual CSS code for that. It uh, has a little bit more extra code in here just to you know, get the effect to work properly. So once again, we're defining our transition code directly inside of our CSS classes. You can bunch those up together if you want. ng-animate supports that. But let's see this thing in action. So let's say I search for web development. You can see that everything kind of flashes in. Huh? That's mm -hmm. a cool animation. Let me see it again. Uh-huh. Again? Uh, one more time. OK. There we go. OK. OK, so that being transitions, anything else Wait, you want to say? How much CSS was that? How much CSS? A lot of CSS, but well, no um, JavaScript, though. How much CSS did it take you to do that? Like, you already saw it. OK, OK. We, we, Come on. Oh, okay. Anyway, so for animations. Oh, is, now he's really upping the ante. So we've had keyframes. CSS animations, CSS transitions. Mm -hmm. So that was my next question is, what if you want to do JavaScript? I mean, I come from a Flash background. I love programmatic animation. Is, you know, what about those guys? Well, you can hook it up with the ng-module.animation. And in here, you will define an animation that references a CSS class, okay. this one being .expand. And we have the enter animation states, and we have the leave animation state. And in this case, we're animating from the left, and we're fading it in, and we're animating out to the left and fading it out. So let's take a look to see what that looks like in our comments section in a video. What? Pretty cool, huh? One more time. I know you're trying to kill time with looking at all these demos, but we've got to really focus on our so application. So we, we sequenced this for 25 minutes, and we found out we had 35 minutes. So we just have to slow the jokes down, apparently. <laughs> So it looks like you're using jQuery to animate this, but you know what like what if you want to use a different animation library? Like Well, you just gotta put it in there, like Greensock, for example, you'd wrap it with a tween max library, put tween So max anything two. in between these lines here, I can basically put whatever I want in there. All you have to do is call the done method when you're done. Okay, and so what's that for? That's for closing the animation off. So you can actually know when the animation is done. Well you have to know to close it off. 
So I have to know. Yeah. All right. Anyway, this is going nowhere. Let's continue. You're okay. going nowhere. So if NG class, NG class, I want to bring this up. Go back to transitions for a second because mm -hmm. at first when we built NG Animate, we were wondering, you know, we're going to have our own naming structure, and you know, if you're using NG Animate, you're using NG Animate, and if you're not, you're not using it. But you know, this was kind of complicating things, so we redesigned it right before we released the stable version. And this one works around natural CSS transitions, and it just adds extra CSS classes around it in case you want to style it even further. So it looks like the code on the right here um, is longer. Like, why would you use that? Like, I mean, it's a little bit more code. What's the, uh, what's the advantage in that? So the advantage is that, let's say that you have a carousel, and the carousel starts on the left, and then it fades in, mm -hmm. and then when you want to animate outwards, it goes to the right. But let's say that you're not using leave or move. You would have to specify two separate directions for the animation. That one you can do with the extra CSS classes, whereas if you only had one CSS class, it would be tricky. You'd have to have multiple CSS classes. OK, so I mean, it looks like this is certainly a lot more self-documenting. Precisely. So it would actually be pretty cool if the AngularJS docs were self-documenting. I am going to actually propose that to Brad after this talk. All right, enough of that, enough of that. OK, so you know. Aren't you wondering the steps involved or any of that stuff? Well, I, I am now. OK, so it starts off with scope changing, right? Yep. And the scope triggers the directive in charge, whether it be ng include, ng repeat, show hide, all that stuff. And those directives perform a DOM operation. And that DOM operation goes through the animate service. And when that happens, it looks up the class names involved, right? So if you have you know, animate, fast, smooth, these CSS classes on your element at the time, it will look for the matching CSS elements in your style sheet as well as in your JavaScript code. Transitions, CSS animations, keyframes are all run at the same time. And then there's two phases to an animation. There's the before phase, meaning that the animations take place before the DOM operation. So example, ng leave, the CSS animation, that happens before the DOM operation, and then ng enter would happen after. Finally, the animations are closed, and it awaits further animation. OK. So, before we continue, I just wanted to bring up a few things about CSS transitions and animations. Well, the beauty of ng animate is that every time an animation happens, it checks the element's CSS classes to see what to animate. This means that you can put your CSS code inside of a style sheet and have a media query that will attract those styles properly. And it also means that if you add and remove additional CSS classes, then it won't cache anything in the wrong way and it will animate exactly what you expect it to. So. This is near and dear to my heart. Tell me more about JS animations. Well, seeing as you just don't understand CSS, well, no. let's just focus on JavaScript That's, for a second. CSS is like drunk driving, so. <laughs> I mean, this is a little bit more sane, so. OK, so back to the JavaScript example. We have an animation called crazy animation, right? And we have these, this little key value object that's returned, you know, expected to be returned in the animation. What other properties can you put in there? Well, enter, leave, and move. Those, we had enter and leave in our JavaScript animation, but move can be put in as well for a repeater, add class or remove class, which is triggered right after the class has been added, and before add class and before remove class prior to the class being added, and finally an optional method called allow cancel, where you can determine to see if the existing animation that's running should be canceled or not. And if it isn't canceled, then the follow-up animation will not be run. So what if I wanted to use like animations in a directive. Like how would I do that? Like what if I manually wanted to trigger an animation? We use the animate service. So dollar animate, which is used inside of the ng directives, is the service to use when performing all DOM operations. And if you don't have ng animate inside of your application, animate will still be available, although it won't do any animations. So why would you have it? It's just there. You know, it's depending just, to an element. Just to feel good. Yeah, I know you like you know, using as much raw JavaScript code as you can. You, know. you better believe it. So. Uh, I think if we took your directive example a little bit further, we wouldn't be invited here next year. Well, so. yeah, but thanks for saving me for myself. Um, so uh, elaborate on this. Like, I'm interested to, to how to s actually add this animate service into my directive. OK. So like I said, triggers the animations. And when an animation happens, let's say it's a ng view rendering content into view, all of the child animations, all the directives within are going to be disabled until that view animation is done which helps speed up things, and you won't have mm -hmm. all these crazy animations flying at the same time. And these are the event methods available on the animate service that you can call. Finally, the last method at the bottom can turn off animations on and on for the entire application. Like, give me an example. Well, let's say that 
users want to have on a settings page hide animations. They'll just click that, it's stored into a cookie, and then when the page loads, bootstraps, it would read the cookie and put that on or off. So this actually brings me to an important question, and I'm going off script here, is, I mean, what's the browser support on this? Like, I mean, would you use this to actually, like, oh, well, this browser is not capable, we're just going to turn off the animations? And, and I, would, I would actually prefer to use them, because, you know, browsers are getting to the point where, you know, most browsers support CSS the same way, uh, CSS transitions and animations, that being. So you really target mobile devices like this. So before we start talking about how to do that, let's talk about some of the other things that happen under the hood with ng-animate. So like I said before, if you have one animation that's running and the follow-up animation comes up, it's going to cancel that animation. And then it skips all the child animations. And all of the get computed style operations, which this is the way that we detect to see if a transition exists on an element, that will get cached if the same animation is run right away. So for example, an injury repeat with a thousand elements, if it's run for all thousand elements, it's only going to run it once and cache it for the rest of them. That sounds fast. And finally, with our new system in 1.2, in order to speed up things, it takes all of the animations that are running close to the same time and groups them into one reflow. And a reflow is a repaint. And what that does is once the repaint happens, then the animations kick off. So with, with the, hold on, hold on. With the new features of NG Animate, I wanted to talk about how to attract specific CSS classes if you want to improve the animations on your website. So with ng animate, by default, every, every class that's on an element, it checks to see if there's animations associated with it. And while this has been improved, with RC2 to RC3, we sped up ng animate by 5,000%. 5,000%. Yeah. Wow. But it still can get slow, so therefore we have this feature where you can provide a regex into the animate provider where you can tell it only animate these CSS classes with this special syntax. So if right. I wanted to animate, or not animate, all the Lucas classes, I could. Why would you want to do that? I'll keep that in mind for when we yeah, present that's... next. Okay, so another feature that we have are DOM callbacks. And DOM callbacks, these are a brand new feature, 1.2.9. When was this released? Yesterday. Oh. <laughs> so, what this allows you to do is when an animation occurs in another directive, so you have a directive on top of the ng-repeat, and you want to detect to see when the DOM operation has occurred, so you can do some styling, or you want to detect it before, you can tag onto these events that are fired. And the animation details provides the class name and all the other information associated with the animation that took place. Finally, we have staggering animations. What? So Keep going. If, what does this do? If anyone's used Greensock before, a stagger is when you have one element that appears after the other element, but there's a little delay in between. So if we go back to our ng2 application. Wait, are you going to show me how this works? Of course. <sighs> yes. See here how we have all of these elements right here, but we click and they all show up at the same time. Now, you know, to add an extra effect to our application without having to put a crazy other JavaScript framework in there, we can simply add these classes for a stagger. So just like with ng leave and ng enter, if we have ng enter stagger, ng leave stagger, we can provide a delay, in this case, you know, 100 milliseconds, uh -huh. that will occur between each item getting inserted into the repeater list. Finally, we need to provide a transition duration of zero just in case accidental CSS inheritance. Because if this wasn't here, everything would stagger. So let's save and let's see this thing in action. So we didn't see the videos load yet, but watch what happens now. What? All right, so let me see a show of hands. How many people think that Matthias should actually write a blog post about this? Lucas, I wrote a blog post last month. Where have you been? Yeah, that's, like I said, okay. Well, I know what I'm doing after this. Do you want me to embarrass you in front of 700 people again? You've already embarrassed me. Okay. Every time we go out in public. So. <laughs> All right, so people have paid a lot of money to be here. Like, give me, like, you know, let's give some people the juice. Like, what's coming in 1.3? Like, you know, go to Area 51 and pull something out for us. I don't think Area 51 would qualify because it's an open source project. Well, whatever. So, anyways, you're deferring. Like, I mean, what what can we expect in 1.3? So, the first thing we're going to fix is right now with class-based animations like ng show, ng hide, all that stuff. It there's a little bit of a complication between the way that 
structural animations are run, enter, leave, move, versus class-based. With class-based, you need to add all the CSS properties, and then once all that has happened, you need to animate it. Whereas right now, we're canceling things when a new CSS class is, an is added. But this is a breaking change of 1.2, so this will go into 1.3. That's the primary thing. Okay. The second thing, we might end up changing the JavaScript API. We're not sure yet, but we want to have more flexibility to offer better animations. And then? And then finally, to be honest, like we, let's all collaborate on this. You, know, you guys are the ones who are using ng-animate and AngularJS, so you know, give your ideas. Let's all work together to make a really cool driver for this. So I think the answer is, like, what's next in ng-animate is you tell us. Is that, in, I'm going to once again go a little off script here, is that in terms of Angular as a whole, I've been doing it for a while, is that the team is incredibly responsive to ideas. So, you know, you have Julie up here up front and she's like, Protractor, I accept pull requests, I, tutorials, whatever, like, hit me. And Matthias, same thing, is that, you know, we've, we've kind of been having a lot of fun here, it's a little, been a little bit irreverent. At the same time, is that if you guys want to see something, or you are using something and it's not quite working right, is, you know, like we're available to actually address those things and factor that in and let you guys drive ng animate and where it's going next. So, yep. Anything you want to add to that? No, I'm happy with your that, response that for was, once. That was from my heart. <laughs> that, was, that was from my soul. All right, so the links to this article, the awesome.ng2.com. Go to the, this one, not mine. Is the completed application, the slides, or the slides you're looking at, and that is the GitHub repo for all the code. And we do accept pull request. No, we don't. What? <laughs> He's embarrassing me in front of my friends again. And here are our contact info. Thank you so much.